This is the iMac 21.5 inch late 2015 and I have had this iMac for a while now. This almost 10 year old iMac is no longer supported by Apple and as a result certain apps that require newer versions of Mac OS to function would not run on this iMac. The latest Mac OS that this iMac naturally supports is Mac OS 12 Monterey. However, in this video, I will be demonstrating how you can upgrade this iMac to any of the latest Mac OS versions without losing any of your apps or files. So stay with me and let's do this. I would like to mention that I upgraded the hard disk drive that came along with this iMac to an SSD with the hope of improving the loading speeds on this device. Although the process I will be demonstrating would work fine without having to do this, if you are interested in the details of how this is done, kindly check in the video description. I open Safari app and search for Open Core Legacy Patcher. I click on the first link that brings me to the Dotania website and I click on Getting Started. I will be downloading the free application I will be using for the upgrade from this website. If you are interested in learning more about Open Core Legacy Patcher and what it does, you can learn more about it here on this website. I click on Creating Mac OS Installers and I click Open Core Legacy Patcher Release Apps. The latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher as at the time of this video is 2.2.0. I scroll down and click on Open Core dash patcher dash GUI dash app dot zip and click allow to begin the download. When the download completes, I double click to run the app. I click open when this comes up and enter the system password when prompted. When the app opens, I select build and install open core and select install to disk. I select the SSD drive and select the EFI partition to proceed with the installation of Open Core Legacy Patcher to the SSD drive in the iMac. I reboot the system when the installation is completed. When the system comes up, I open the Open Core Legacy Patcher app once more and select Create Mac OS Installer and select download Mac OS installer. The latest Mac OS as at the time of this video is Mac OS 15 Sequoia, but for this demonstration I will be installing Mac OS 14 Sonoma as it offers a really stable Mac OS integration with the patcher. I click to select macOS Sonoma and click download. The download validation and extraction lasted for about 10 minutes, after which I received this prompt to create a macOS installer. For this you would need an external USB device of not less than 16GB in size. I select no and select return to the main menu. I select Create Mac OS Installer. I select Use Existing Mac OS Installer. I select Install Mac OS Sonoma. This comes up if a supported install media is not yet connected to the iMac. I have here the USB flash drive that I intend to use for this installation. Note that everything on the USB installation media will be deleted in the process. So do make a backup if you have anything important on it. I connect the USB flash drive to the iMac and search again. I click OK to grant access and proceed to select the USB installation media from this page. 
I click yes to confirm and the creation of the installation media commences. The creation lasted for 23 minutes and I click yes when this prompt comes up. I select install to disk to install OpenCore Legacy Patcher to the USB media. I select the USB flash drive on this page and select the EFI partition to proceed. I click reboot to reboot the device. I hold down on the option key as the iMac restarts and I select the EFI boot option. I select install macOS Sonoma. Here I select install macOS Sonoma and click continue. I click continue to proceed. I select agree. I select the SSD and I click continue. The installation progresses and lasted for 34 minutes with the device restarting a few times before landing on the login page. I log in and safely eject the installation USB media. I open OpenCore Legacy Patcher to verify that the post install root patches were run during the installation. And yes, it was. I also verify that no apps or files were deleted in the course of the upgrade. And yes, from this, I can confirm that all the apps that I had installed prior to the upgrade are still intact. I am also able to install apps that previously I could not install on this iMac. And they all seem to be functioning very well, as you can see. There is also the option to upgrade to macOS 15 Sequoia if I so desire, but I would hold off from doing that for the time being. Therefore, I will be leaving the update settings as shown here to prevent an automatic update from occurring before I am ready for one. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. If you have any questions on this installation, do feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a blessed and excellent day. Bye for now.